you know, I, I picked that wallpaper because Silver Beast, and I'm not sure if I was talking about the Topping LA90 Discreet or the fucking 10P2s, because holy shit, we are on high gain on this. And this is the Sherlock Holmes 2 OST, and it's just... Oh! All right, so welcome back to the second video for the Topping LA90 Discreet, trying to see if it's different enough from the LA90. Like, it doesn't matter. If you haven't bought one, this isn't available anymore. You're going to get this. I'm trying to verify for you if it's as good as its predecessor, which was more expensive, because this is now a discrete power supply and more power. It's 66 watts per channel at 8 ohms instead of 50. But like price goes down, I get nervous, time to do some testing. That initial video was like my crazy panic test. Now I've been sitting down with IMs. If you guys don't know, I have another channel, In Your Fetish, but of course, of course, um, where I review just IMs and I brought out the cadenzas. These are the Letcher cadenzas. These are like $2,200. $2, and um, Hi-Fi Go sent me a cable because they're like, hey, do you want an expensive cable to test? So I'm like, yes. So this is the Effect Audio Signature Series Aries S 8-wire, which is like 275 fucking dollars, but it's like a good cable. And I, if you didn't see the video of the cadenzas, you actually need like a super low impedance cable. And I figured that would be a good way to test also between using my um, heavy 12-gauge adapter into this, or 14-gauge adapter, 14-gauge adapter into this, versus this uh, slightly shorter far more expensive double helix adapter into this. So according to this, there was no real big difference. Also, I want to point out render tips work on there. I was having a problem with tips on the cadenzas. Render tips, a-okay. Second set of IEMs I whipped out, and I'm going to get to headphones in a minute because I'm going to stop the video. Second uh, set of headphones or IEMs I whipped out is obviously the Dunu Zen Pros. Uh, also on a ridiculously expensive cable because I had it and it was MMCX and I'm going to use it. Uh, this is a DD Hi-Fi cable that's like 300 bucks. And so this is like super fucking sensitive. So I was like, uh, and it was playing. And this was like, man, it was, it was, it was like, it was like that, it was like not bad on low gain. And this is like nothing on low gain. And now these 10 P2s are just... Like I could die... But if you said plug an IM into a speaker amp straight into the back terminals and turn it up, these are your boys. And this is the only way to listen to them. Do not try to listen to these on anything else. Anyway, yeah, silver fucking monsters. These planar tin P2s. Um, you got to hear them on a speaker amp. Like, they compete. Beautiful wire, by the way. Ends in a 2.5 millimeter, which is, is l lame and l for losers. So I have it in this drop adapter. I'm sorry. Mass drop adapter. Have you heard this site called Mass Drop? So yeah, no, these things. So what I can judge from just these three IMs, because I'm gonna get the Rinko, it's gonna get my collab stuff out. So far, not a huge or if any intended difference, except for on these. Volume knob is a little baby bit a bit um higher on this one than it was on this one. Just because the increased power. Uh I think we're gonna I feel like the topping here, it might actually have to be used for speakers, like its intended purpose, before I actually grasp that discrete difference. But the fact that I'm running super sensitive IMs, super expensive and sensitive IMs, and super impossible to drive IMs off, a, off the rear fucking terminals of a speaker amp and telling you that you could absolutely do this is, again, a credit to the LA90 lineup. I wouldn't say there's a benefit on either one of these at this point right now. But um, now we're going to move on to headphones. And we're going to see how that make the do. Because, oh, by the way, what's a mouse pad? Do that. Okay. So now we just went through the entirety of the Sherlock Holmes 2 OST. Great series, by the way. 1 and 2 were amazing. But as soon as 2 aired, they never showed 1 on TV again. Um, like on the Cinemax channels and stuff. So that sucks. But anyway, when's 3 coming out? Sherlock Holmes can be old. I want old. Old Iron Man in there. Um, I've got his name for a second. Wow. Uh, so, four headphones. A pretty good array of things going on here. Ar Argon T60s was the final play. Uh, Timsock TS-124s. 124s, 1024s. I know what day of the week it is. It's fuck day. Um, yeah, no, I love my Timsocks. I love my Timsocks. 
especially with these Dakoni gel pads. Uh, brought up the 909s because I'm a masochist. And 8XX. So 8XX are kind of like, they don't care. Put them between the two, can't tell. I, I thought I could tell. For a split second, I was like, there's something. No, it's probably volume. No. 909s do not like either of these amplifiers. I'm, I don't remember if I talked about the 909s with the LA90. I thought maybe it was good. But going through a bunch of headphones to this is just like, meh. They're just like, nah, bruh, nah. These are such fucking prima donnas. Like, it's not even funny. Like, I can't believe I, I paid money for you. Work. It's like yelling at a prostitute. Work. I paid $1,100 for you. I got them on sale. Work. So they just sound dull. And even with the Yaxi pads, they want a tube or some fucking exotic thing. I actually, before this video ends, I'm going to swap this. These are both currently running off the same uh, Gishelli Labs DAC, which is a fine DAC. But I want to know if I push that little bit extra, if I throw like an R2R behind it, if it'll make the goes. Um, so yeah, these could not tell no difference. These sounded equally poor. I just love listening to the Tim Socks, uh, which actually are harder to drive than the T60 Argons. Like, I was like, oh, I left the volume up where that was. I plugged this in. It was like, oh, my God. Lower a little bit. Um, and the T60 Argons were just sitting here screaming fucking Sherlock Holmes. We actually went through two and it went to one. I don't know why they're backwards. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, because the number two comes before the letter O for OST. That's what one. I have a Sherlock Holmes one OST. All right, whatever. I'll deal with it. So, so far... Not hearing a huge difference uh, in the discrete versus the non-discrete. Just it's just not happening. Well, the, and I've given the advantage to the older unit of the uh, more expensive cable. Although I don't think it's going to make a difference considering these are dual. Well, actually, no. Each one of those is getting a 14 gauge, so I think it's probably fine. I think we're probably we're seeing an internals upgrade and a power supply upgrade. The next video that I film in this series will be for the speaker end of this, which I got to double check, see if I'm getting two of these. If I'm getting two, I won't film that one until I have, well, two of these. So I could do the monoblock shit. Um, but I could definitely hook up RB42s to this and go, wee, see if the extra 16 watts uh, takes them to where I'm the happiest. Because one of the issues I had with the original i90 is on super inefficient speakers like the RB42s. By the way, Link Zeos to Micah RB42s, the greatest passive speaker you can get for under $200. On these, I was pushing it really close to the top end, and it was just the edge of distortion because it is perfectly clean at, at half or two thirds volume, 75%. You're still great. 80, 90, it's getting like, oh, and then you're just up to like, you're running not class A, you're running class D. So this, with the extra 16 watts, might be able to get me exactly where we need to go. We'll find out in the next section. Now let's swap, let's take this one off the desk. And let's put this one only on a better DAC, and we'll see if it can make any sort of noticeable difference. Okay, so I want to apologize to my 909s. I didn't mean to call you mean. Um, change the wire because the wire I was using was like a Tacony prototype and it probably has super high impedance. So I've got a periapt on here now and I've got it on the Denim Frips Aries and there's just, there's just enough of a difference to be like, there's a reason this R2R DAC is like the one that I'm like, yes, <clears throat> if you're going to spend money on a DAC, it's make it this one. And so the combination of that and this is just, that's fucking, let's uh, swap out now. We're doing this live, by the way. Live! None of this pre-recorded, then I pretend that I'm surprised. I have no idea what's going to fucking happen. Sundara, 2022? Or was this a 2021? When did this one have a new revision? I think it was 21. <clears throat> by the way, Aiden Tyre's stake in the interim. And that's not making a sound out of the right channel. Oh, it's not plugged in all the way. There you go. Cabo good headphones. This is Devilman Crybaby, Buddy Ryu, Ryo. It's taking a surprising amount of power. I, this is a solid fucking headphone amp. I think it's still my default, my go-to. This is uh, Evangelion 444. If a cause is worth dying for, then be... And it gets cut off, unless it's just Japanese, and that's where it ends. 
Hold on, I, it's it's got to be it's got to have a longer title than that. If a cause is worth dying for, then B. Oh God Almighty! Fuck! This is a good song. It just has a stupid title. Then so be it. That would be a good title. I'll be a fucking metal as fuck title. Yeah, this is. Oh, what is that? Marilyn Manson, The Speed of Pain. Oh, it's like electrifying. It's like, it's, you know what? I've used a lot of amplifiers, like a lot. And I, I've used, I'm assuming this is as good as the original LA90. It's even cheaper, and I love it in silver. There's something about when you turn an amplifier up loud, and it's like, I'm like a Gashelli or, or an Atom or something that's like, one of these, like you get it, and like you know you're pushing an amplifier past where it's happy. But this on low gain is always happy. And if I wanted to push this to the maximum, the first thing that's gonna break is my ears, followed by the headphones, not the amp. It's just a safety net. It's like driving a, a, an 18 wheeler with 75 feet of foam in front of you. Cause you know if you can hit something, it's gonna be like boom, 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 boom. You're gonna have like an hour to get before it bothers you. It's just, you could just infinitely turn. And I love this knob. Again, I love a big, fat, thick knob. Just look at it up on top of the DAC, which is like, mmm. How the hell, this is getting bass out of Sundara. It's getting low end out of Sundara. And I brought out the harmonica on G200s because I don't use them enough. I have a comfort issue with them. It's developed over the time of me like having them, is that they, they that hits that I can't like bend it. So it just doesn't, it just, it's like, I want it to be here and it's, it's just here. And I can only thing I can do is try to bend the fucking pads in because you can't melt the fucking carbon fiber, unfortunately. Oh, if I squeeze the wires together, it might work just to be like full comfort. But if you have an hour ahead than me, which is very easy to do, you'll enjoy the G200s. God, that's... I was going to say sharp, but I don't think sharp's the right word. There's so much focus. Treble focus. I might have to take this out of its fucking headband. As much as I like this and the carbon fiber, I may have to remove it from here and put these cups into something that's just more adjustable. Because as soon as you open it up, you get, you're locked. Like, that's as high up as that'll go. So it needs angled pads with this angle at the bottom. God, I brought these things to fucking Chicago to show them off. They fit everyone's head but mine. Oh, this is a Scrooge OST. See, if I could just pull it like this way. See, like, I need to need to make this. Must I attach... Screw something here to bend that. Like a bar, and then pull the middle down? Because then it would be like... No, it still would not. I have, to, I have to... You can't bend anything here because it's all carbon fiber. <sighs> yeah, no. I, I don't know what I'm... I don't even know why I'm still filming this video. I'm just here to praise any chance I get to say the LA90 is my favorite headphone amplifier is, an, is a chance I'm going to take. I've got... The new Rebel Amp, well, there's a there's a Rebel Amp collab coming up, but I haven't decided what I want to try to do. Obviously, front power switch and things like that. But I like I know where I should aim with that because it ain't going to be this. Not ever. But that's got to be class A. Like, I have to I have to put all my favorite amps in their own little corners because if they all try to compete with this, they're going to lose. So that had better be the warmest, smoothest fucking motherfucker on the face of the earth to compete with, like, the, the clean... Just the absolute state of your headphones. That's what the LA90 does for me. And I will take this over the A90D seven out of 10 times, maybe even eight out of 10 times. But now that they're both silver, I could stack them and I won't, I won't feel like vomiting. Just like, oh my God, handsome family, lie down. I gotta make these headphones fit and then I could use them more oftenly. More oftenly. Anyway, I'm done. Um, with this revision, there'll be a part three for the LA90 Discrete coming up in the speaker testing arena. 
uh, probably the boo carts. What other speakers would you like them to test? Say so in this video, although they'll probably all be recorded by the time this comes out. So yeah, I've got I've got a couple down there. Boo cards, four hundreds down there. Not a lot of passives here. Yamos five thirties are passive. What else? We got the clips are passive. Active, 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 active. Those Yamos in the middle. Actually, holy shit! I just realized it didn't dawn on me. The white ones at the bottom are Yamo S803s, and the black ones in the very center are Yamos as well. I forget the model number of them. I love Yamo. I love Lamp, and there's also the uh, the Kefs down there. Anyway, wallpaper in the Horde. Patreon subscribe star. Support these ramblings. See them early. If you see them early, you don't have to wait a day to skip them. Does that make sense? It doesn't seem like I'm promoting myself properly. But yeah, $5 a month. See reviews early, participate in yard sales, hear all the sound demos, which I don't I now put on YouTube anymore. So all the sound demos that are gone, you could listen to them. And all the sound demos I've been creating in the last like three or four months, you can watch them. And, you know, I could use whatever tracks I want, which is much better. Much better. Holy fuck, better, better, better. Anyway, I'm probably going to do a sound demo on this desk with this because everything here is fucking glorious. I'll hook the stacks amp back up and we'll get the, now we'll get this into this through stacks. And for $10 a month, you get in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat, where if you know you're a patron, you want to get all those features, but you also want to talk to me directly in a big group chat. And it's like, hey, add CEOs Pantera. What about this thing for this thing and for this thing? I'll answer your questions. It's it's the show me the money. Um, because literally I can't answer. I tried. I can't even answer $5 patron questions. I'm a, I apologize wholeheartedly if you're a $5 patron and you thought you could do that and like message me. I don't even check it. There's constantly 99 plus for the last three or four years. So if you actually want to message, even if you just join for 10 for a, a week, you'd be in the, the chat for three months. There's a three month window where you're in it and then it gets every quarter. So you have plenty of chances for five extra dollars to just ask me anything you want. You'd still get all the other benefits and access to the swap meet channel where you can buy, sell and trade gear for life. So even if you just want to ask me one question, it costs you five bucks and then you get into swap meet channel where you could buy, sell and trade gear for life. And uh, also a wallpaper hoard. If you don't know how that works, check out my second channel for that video. I'll link to th some things, but honestly, this is just, uh, it's the new thing. And I'm considering I should write like, like pussy and then like, okay, we're getting there. And then like just death, just fucking death. Cool volume knobs are cool. Anyway, I'm done, you're done, thank you, and I'll see you for the next video where we do speaker things with this, which I'm sure it'll be, ex it'll excelsior.